Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. I'm Mr. Wrong Way, and this is my brutally honest King Song S22 Pro review. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong Way. All right, guys, it's been 3,200 kilometers with this wheel, and with this review, I'll be trying something different than usual. I will be just keeping this review mostly factual. If you want to see action, if you want to hype up yourself for the Kingsong S22, this is not the video for you. Because I will talk about all of the nasty things that are difficult about this wheel. All of the things that require maintenance, parts that need replacement right away if you want to do heavy off-roading. So if you want to hype yourself up, there's plenty of videos you want to watch. This is a brutally honest review and I will tell you guys what's up with this wheel after riding it for 3,000 kilometers and after experiencing a lot of various um, interesting things with the S22 Pro. So with that said, huge thanks to my e-wheel for letting me test this wheel, letting me review it. If you want to get a wheel like this or any other wheel in Europe, feel free to use my coupon code WRONGWAY for an additional 5% off at my e-wheel. If you want to get it anywhere else outside of Europe, links are below. Let's get started. All right, so just uh, like any of my other full reviews of EUCs, we will get uh, six parts in this video. First up, we'll talk about safety of this wheel, then durability, then ride, then we'll talk about performance, features and sort of practicality, and at the end we will conclude it all. But before we get into all of this, I'm here to tell you that this wheel is very exciting. Probably you've seen many videos where this thing is flying or doing crazy stunts. And this is true, but there's also a different side to the Kingsong S22. So with that said, let's start with safety. Right away, we will have to start up with a very big point and a very big issue about the Kingsong S22. And that is that the battery packs are not isolated whatsoever. This is the only wheel, and I believe the S19 as well, but I'll need to check on that, that has the batteries not wrapped and shrink wrapped. Now, Emotion goes as far as to providing IP ratings of IP65, so their batteries, if something bad happens to the wheel, will not explode, will not corrode with when touching water or even submerging them underwater. And King Song has them just out in the open. And I cannot stress this enough how big of an issue this is. So I know it's best to ride not in rain, it's best to not ride next to bodies of water, but stuff happens, stuff can happen. And when a thing like this would fall into water, you fish it out, this becomes a safety hazard and a potential fire risk. So I can't stress this enough and I will keep pressuring King Song to shrink wrap their batteries. It's as easy as it sounds and it needs to be done. And in tandem with that is the water resistance of an EUC. Now, I don't know how, but companies still sometimes think that we don't ride those things in rain. Now, even if we don't intend to ride them in rain, sometimes this can happen. And this wheel doesn't have an IP rating and it has a couple of critical failure points where stuff can get a bit dicey when it comes to waterproofing. So, Tadju, I can show you here. Inside the wheel, uh, here, we have the battery charge ports and we have a power button. Can you see them? Yep. All right, so the thing is that those ports aren't that well sealed. So again, in case this falls to a puddle or if you ride in rain, there's some water here on those sidewalls and the wheel flips for some reason off-road, potentially some stuff can get in through here and also through the power button, which is also not sealed. You can see how it moves here, the button like this, see? Maybe from this angle, I can take the camera for a sec. Boom. This is not isolated whatsoever. So I know, again, you should be careful with the wheel, but if this is designed for off-road, if this is designed for using it in a city, sometimes things can go wrong. And this is a problem that will occur once the wheel potentially flips over or by accident falls into a puddle. Now, in usual use cases, I was riding this thing in rain, no issues, but the danger is still there. And in tandem with those not sealed batteries, I just, I just can't understand why King Song went out of the way and make a tiny sacrifice on money or whatever engineering in turn of a great sacrifice for safety and reliability, durability, water resistance of this wheel. 
And the batteries are not the only water related issue on this wheel. So with this motor, the HH motor that I have, it turns out that there wasn't enough sealant around the motor covers and bearings. So both my bearings broke and water started getting in into the motor area. So the stator is essentially not to use now. It could be very dangerous to use this motor right now. The hull sensors could be easily damaged. Now, with the newest iteration of this motor, those problems should be solved and more info on that on my e-wheel page. Like, just goes to show you that there wasn't enough testing done to the motor in order to ensure that it's absolutely safe to use. Just with iterative batches, they figure out their mistakes. And who suffers with that? The client. But it's of course not all bad with the Kingsong S22 because the Kingsong S22 does come with a smart BMS. So in case something happens to the battery long term, you're able to see if uh, some cell series are uh, disbalanced. So then it will not allow you to ride, it will tilt back, and you won't be able to ride a wheel if there's a some sort of damage in the battery pack. There's also communication, of course, between the battery packs and the motherboard. The charge ports are cold, which are located here. However, I would just really like to see a different sort of uh, connector here. Just having this male side uh, with the prongs sticking out, I don't think it's the best solution. There's plenty of better charge ports you could use for a wheel like this, also more durable ones. And ones that are easier to put in than this. You can very easily bend the pin here if you're not careful. When it comes to good things about the electronics here, there's a suite of sensors all around the wheel. Uh, so you have a motor temperature sensor, which is great. You have a bed temperature sensor on the board. And additionally, you also have temperature sensors uh, in the batteries, which is great for safety in general. However, they sometimes don't work reliably or there's some sort of a problem with this wheel where after a long set of inclines, you can uh, damage the motherboard. So I witnessed one or maybe two uh, Kingsong S22s having one of the phase connectors to the motor blow or melt a little bit just damage the control board when going longer up a steep hill. So while those temperature sensors are here, I think they need to be a little bit dialed in because, well, if you still have the sensors, you go up a hill and then the board fries, well, something is not right. Except for that, there's also fuses in this wheel, in the battery, so that is great. And software features that will not allow you to ride if you overpower the wheel. So for example, if you accelerate too hard, there will be a beep. <laughs> Uh, if uh, it gets too warm, except for this weird face wire issue, it should tilt you back. Low battery tilt back to high speed tilt back. So this is a suite of things that is really nice and a must have to be in a proper electric unicycle. Last but not least on safety, well, it is coinciding a bit with durability. The fact that Kingsong decided to use 125 volt MOSFETs. Now they did a lot of tests apparently and those were more reliable than the actual 150 volt counterparts. But you have a 126 volt wheel. When you're braking, this voltage could even go up on the board. You choose to have 125 volt MOSFETs. I mean, just the numbers don't add up. I, I don't know at which point it comes to failure at those uh, with those MOSFETs. I'm not an electrician, but when I see this discrepancy in clear numbers and potentially overcharging the wheel when braking, on those MOSFETs, uh, well, when they reach a higher voltage, I just can't see why they chose to use two low voltage MOSFETs on a 126 volt wheel. We had a different issue before with Emotion V12 and there was a massive fallout of those wheels just cutting out. This doesn't seem to be the case with the S22, but still, if something like this happens, I mean, just choose 100 50 volt MOSFETs or 200 volt MOSFETs. Don't choose something that is actually lower than the voltage of the batteries. Now, with this said, this might have been a cold shower for you, but I'm not still done. Let's get into durability. <laughs> All right, when it comes to durability, well, first thing I think of is warranty. And this is something that I will include also in my Fisher reviews. So the Kingsong S22 Pro comes with a two year or 6,000 kilometer warranty. Now, at first, this might seem as a little bit much, but if you are a rider like me, I do 1,500 to 2,500 kilometers a month. So realistically speaking, if you get this thing, you, you could be out of warranty within two or three months in my setting. But Taju, how many kilometers do you uh, do yearly? 
two to four K maybe. So then you would actually have possibly the two year warranty. Uh, this is something I wanted to include. So you guys are updated about the warranty terms of service on this wheel at my Eolves because I was talking with them about it. All right, so the list of issues or things that I need to talk about in the durability department was so long that I actually needed to bundle it up into different categories. So first, we'll talk about the suspension mechanism. Uh, so maybe a good thing first, the, this shock it is a good shock. It's a DNM shock, nothing too fancy, but it works well. I haven't heard yet of any bigger issues with it. We'll talk about the bolts, which are not made by the manufacturer of the spring. But the shock is good. You can adjust it. Uh, you can add some preload. I changed the spring to have a um, aftermarket spring from Ho Ning Ning. Uh, this has been working great for me and it has been really good for those bigger jumps. And everything about the shock and spring holds up well. But everything for, apart from that might be a potential issue. So let's start with the rollers first. The biggest difference between the S22 and the S22 Pro shock assembly or suspension is that inside here we have rollers. Now, those rollers might work for you for 3000 kilometers and you're fine, but other people uh, have to exchange them every once in a while. So even though it is not as difficult to exchange them, you just essentially need to um, remove some part of the suspension assem assembly and then you slide out the whole thing. You can see the rollers right away, change them up and then you're good to go. But it is a, it is a thing of maintenance that you need to take care of. And especially if you do jumps, you do a bit more off-roading, this thing can get dirty uh, and those rollers might get used up. It is not, in my opinion, a big issue, but it is a headache because you need to do some maintenance on it. The bigger issue in the suspension assembly is the bolt situation here. And, so, and as you can see, this bolt is not stock, 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 this one not. This is the only one that I have left stock, but I just didn't uh, get to the hardware store and I, I couldn't find something fitting in, in, in this area. So the problem is, if you write carefully and normal style of riding, you might be good with those bolts, but I wouldn't be so sure about that either. The problem is that those bolts are essentially, I don't know, made for assembling furniture. I'm not really sure, but the problem is they, they are just not stiff enough. They don't have the right metal uh, to support a rider that rides on top of an electric unicycle. So first up when I was doing jumps, I had this bolt broken. I thought this would be the end of the story. I changed them for hardware bolts, uh, 10, M10 by 30 millimeters. But then when I was on a trip in uh, Gdańsk, this one snapped. And I had a friend snap this one, another friend snap, I don't know, I think also this one. So when you do some hardcore off-roading, you are pretty much certain, 100% certain that at some point, after 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 kilometers, those bolts will snap. And then what happens is this, the wheel drops completely down and if you're not turning maybe you can still survive the, the impact of the shock falling completely down but if you're doing a turn or berm you're pretty much screwed yeah, screwed so this is a big issue with the s19 i saw some improvements here but uh this king song needs to work on that they need to improve this uh if you want to have a solution aftermarket right away honing ning creates a set of bolts for the s22 that are a lot more durable uh, I didn't test them yet, but uh, I mean, it can't be worse than this, right? Then there's a second problem about this whole geometry. Now, while it might, might look very modern, sleek, beautiful, like, oh wow, it works so well, it doesn't work only in this direction, sort of up and down. It also sort of goes out and this creates friction. So what Keysong did is they didn't put bearings into all of those linkages and all of those bolts and therefore the bolts aren't screwing themselves. That's the first problem. And the second problem is that it's a lot less smoother than it could be because there's a lot more friction because of this outwards movement. Now you can't see it that well when it's, when it's all like tightened up. But once I was removing those parts, they really have a lot of play on them. So while this suspension assembly and the rollers might look like a very good thing on paper, in practice, it will just need a little more care and attention and maintenance. I do like the fact though, however, that it's relatively easy to fix. You just get bolts, get the meter from uh, Honing Ning, or get some bolts from the hardware store, 
can exchange the rollers relatively easy, but the problems about the bearings and the movement that goes out, it's not that easy to fix. So while they're trying the, their best, maybe, to make a <laughs> working suspension, there's still a lot of things that need to be done here and inside. The next part is the durability of the shell uh, itself. And first up, I want to talk about the bumper. In this one, this thing fell plenty of times and it's still fine. This bumper works pretty well. And in general, when it comes to the stability of the shell, uh, of all of those bolts here, this is a relatively sturdy wheel. I can uh, be really precise with my riding. It doesn't move around side to side here with this wheel like the Sherman S does. Some people broke the bumper. If you want to get a better bumper, just get something aftermarket from either Nylon O, Prisla, whatever you prefer. The second thing I wanted to talk about the shell is the trolley handle. First of all, it doesn't only sound really bad, but second of all, it's relatively easy to break because once you fall, it doesn't have a locking mechanism so it can fall out by itself. So I actually didn't lube it at all for that reason. So it doesn't fall out by itself. This is, this is really bad. Like you can also just get it out. A friend of mine, really great rider, Chapeau de Rue, had his trolley handle broken from a small fall. So uh, this part is not really durable about the S22 Pro. Now I know some of those things were already present on the S22, but at that time I didn't have enough knowledge to talk about them. So uh, I think I'm not repeating myself, but this is just new knowledge and knowledge from other riders I gained throughout the years and getting more knowledge with the Kingsong S22 lineup. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the motor bolt situation. It is very well known that those motor bolts are really, really low quality. So you will, if you want to get those out, you need a heat gun and prayers. Because even with a heat gun, you might be just unlucky and damage the uh, head of the bolt. I don't know how long we've had been having those problems, but every time I see uh, like a story on working about the Kingsong S22 Pro motor bolts, it's just either breaks, you can't get them out. It requires technique. Maybe Albert from Two Cells One Puck can sell you a technique. I, I think they um, made a video on it too, but they're really low quality. I hope they change them in the future. Further on, when it comes to bearings, this is the HH motor and it has some sort of issues with bearings. I already have new bearings uh, ready for the S22, so we'll be ready to change them. If you have broken bearings, let us know in the comments. When it comes to the rim, uh, as you can see, I've dented it quite a bit, but uh, I was also abusing the wheel a lot. So uh, actually those dents come from landing on a pretty much curb. Uh, when, when doing stunts. This rim is pretty durable, but if you are a nut job like me and you don't have a well-pumped tire, uh, the original tire, which is rather thin, then you might still damage it. So not the sturdiest rim, but uh, as said, I'll be easy on King Sung here because this was really done in extreme circumstances. So here, there it is, one and two. So uh, last but not least, I wanted to talk about the uh, electronical problems that can happen with this wheel. My wheel was fine for 3000 kilometers, no issue with the board, no issue with the BMS, but I've seen just so many problems with this wheel, either up close or just sent through messages, comments, etc. People are having problems with balancing, suddenly the wheel tilts back when you're riding, uh, and the biggest one of them all is if there's some sort of problem between the board and the battery. Now, Anthony, uh, a writer from the UK, had a huge problem with it and I was just a little flabbergasted why this happened. Essentially, the wheel just fell from such a height, like nothing should happen, should have happened. Uh, but after that, the, I believe the board fried, he had to change the board. After changing the board, uh, it didn't have the connection with the BMS. So the wheel was out of service. He changed the BMS, the problem was still there. So essentially the whole battery pack, the, the motherboard and the motor was new, but it still wouldn't work. And then he had to desolder the, the BMS, put it on a different pack and then it would work. So if it works, it's great. But when you start having issues and you start seeing a Christmas tree on the BMS, then it might be just a nightmare to work it out. And then waiting for parts, figuring this thing uh, out, just make, might take a lot of time. So I am familiar with comments under my videos where I see this wheel, uh, people bought it, it was at the service for half a year and they just barely wrote it. So when it works, it's good, but once it doesn't, it might be a huge headache to, to have it. So with that said, this is all about the durability. 
let's talk about the ride of the thing. I'll be a lot more happy to talk about that. All right, so we talked a lot about durability and safety, and while there's ups and downs there, the ride is the complete opposite of that. The ride of this wheel is absolutely exhilarating and the capability is pretty much insane. This is still the only wheel out there that you can do huge jumps on. Well, you could, you could see, with, see it with Shibby Time, with uh, the great Nadia, you see girl. It's amazing really how this wheel can send. And not only that, it's very capable off-road, the software is great, the turning is great, has pretty much no pedal dipping at all. It's very responsive and, and agile. But I already talked about that a lot in my ride review. So if you want to check that out, feel free to check uh, the link here. But just in short, it is a very capable wheel. It's very wide, so you need to get used to that. It's a very big chunk of a wheel. Um, so if you have legs shaped like this, you might have a big, bit of an issue <laughs> riding on it. But other than that, it's absolutely amazing. It doesn't have the most torque. We'll, we'll talk about that in, in the performance uh, section of it. But to do jumps, to do some stairs, especially things related to flying on a wheel, this is still the absolute number one to do it on. Other wheels have either tilt bag, they don't have the power, they, hold, they don't have the suspension. This is still extremely capable and extremely nice to ride. The suspension is plush um, when it's set up correctly and with this bigger spring I have also a great deal of travel so it doesn't bottom out on those bigger jumps. Honestly uh, if it wasn't for that I would probably even get rid of this wheel but because it's still so capable I keep it and that's probably the, the reason for a lot of guys that keep riding it because the ride of this thing is pretty amazing. Now, let's talk about performance. Well, really, really short part on the video. Wow. <laughs> now, performance will be a big difference uh, from the S22 to the S22 Pro. We get a lot more torque with a higher torque motor and a different co control board that is on this wheel. So if you want to have a S22 converted to a S22 Pro, you, will, you would need to both change the motor, the control board. When it comes to the performance, well, it is a lot more fun to ride, it's more zippy, it's more uh, like reactive to your lean, but you have slightly less edge on the top speed end. I don't mind that at all. I ride this wheel typically up to 40, 50 kilometers an hour. I don't need more. The torque isn't endless though. It can go up a 40 degree incline, but you can hear the beeps a lot earlier on this wheel if you're accelerating than for example, a Bigode Extreme or a um, Veteran Patton. So not endless torque, but really enough performance that you need for off-road. Well, maybe not like hardcore off-roading, but uh, really good all around performance. When it comes to the performance, it's a good all-around package. It's not the biggest performance that you can get in this form factor. The Patton, the Extreme is far more capable in that regard, but it's still good. Like with the S22, I wasn't really happy, but with the S22 Pro, it's all right. When it comes to range, it's very similar to the S22. I think I got around 75 kilometers with my riding style. So again, worse than the Extreme and Patton, but still more or less okay. I, I wouldn't call it a long-range wheel uh, of any sort. I would probably choose something with a big battery for long-range rides. And the charging is up to 11 amps. So you will need to wait about one and a half hours at a charging stop uh, to charge fully and then get back on the road. With that said, you get a 5 amp charger in the box, which is awesome. It charges in about three to four hours to, to full. So not too bad in that apartment whatsoever. This is all about performance. Let's get into practicality and features. Now, all of the things on the S22 Pro are pretty much the same as the S22 when it comes to features. So check out my full review for the full detailed description of those features. But just as a brief reminder, the lights are still blinding. It's some sort of floodlight. I don't really like using them on bike paths because they just blind others. Uh, you can set them up, but they're still bl blinding. Uh, the taillight, it's also very dim. Is it even on now? Yeah, it's on now. But it's colorful. It's colorful. It, that, that, that is an actually nice. There's a seat which is usable, but uh, I think a bit short. Not the most comfortable wheel to sit on, but it's doable. It's not too bad. Trolley handle, I really don't like it as said. 
sounds terrible. You can like push it around, it's not impossible. It's very wide, which is cool, but it's pretty low and goes down by itself. You can't put a, a helmet on top of it because it's too wide. Yeah, just in general, the practicality around the city, there's better wheels that do uh, this job. Uh, Mudguard is all right. And one more feature that I found out with this tire that I have, by the way, it's, it's very difficult to obtain a tire. It's, uh, it's a Duro tire. But if the tire is too wide, you can't actually put these suspension uh, linkage settings higher up because the tire will rub against this. So with the stock tire, you can get up to the highest um, setting here on a suspension with a too wide tire, you can't. You would actually need a special CNC part to adjust uh, for that, which is frustrating. So this is uh, just really short info about uh, the, the features. The app is uh, pretty cool with all of the settings. And mainly my, my biggest gripe with this wheel when it comes to features is that out of the box, you don't really have a good setup for doing off-road riding, for doing trails, etc. Because you get a Kingston S22, let's say you pay 3,000, what, 300 euro, then you need to buy the bolts then you need to buy the fairings because the area is too short to put uh, like space the pads properly then you need to buy the pads because well you can ride with the stock pads but i'm not really a big fan of them then if you really want to go off-road you need to buy uh foot plates these are nylon oh by the way this is kinetic I think that's the best setup, like at least my favorite setup for this wheel. Uh, because the original pads, they have small studs and it can get slippery when wet. Those are mountain bike studs, not the same thing as uh, what is stock on the S22. Then you also would want to get a different shock, for example. So out of the box, for example, on the Bigode Extreme, everything is set up. I just need to buy an additional set of pedals because those ones broke. If, if they wouldn't break, if they made better pedals, that's the only thing I would, get on the, I would need to get on the extreme. And here is just the plethora of expenses that you need to invest on in order to fully get into the best capabilities of this wheel. So, I can't believe it. Let's conclude it all. All right, so after a really big amount of experience with this wheel and experience of riders globally uh, on the Kingsong S22, we have a much clearer picture uh, about it. And um, this is still a very capable wheel and it's in some areas, it's the best you can get, for example, for jumps. And if you really like um, the construction of it, there's some aspects of it that you find I know, awesome, then it's still a wheel that is great to get for those reasons. However, a lot of things could be improved in this wheel, as I mentioned in the safety and durability department. The biggest one of them being the water resistance and the safety of the battery packs. I cannot stress that enough. It's really important. Mechanically speaking, it's not that tough to work on, especially the rollers, the bolts in the back. However, if the electronics go haywire, you might have a lot of trouble with it or if, if you just break the board, BMS, etc. On the other side, it's also great that we have a wheel that a lot of people have and a lot of people already know the solutions for the problems that it has. So the bolts, the fairings, the setup of this wheel. If you talk to someone that has an S22, well, chances are they already know their issues and you know how to work on them. So while here you're getting into something that you know that might break, but you know how to work on it, in other wheels you might get into it and you don't really know the solution for those issues. Um, so with that said, Maybe this paints a clearer picture for you on the S22. And if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.